Welcome back everybody. In this video, I want to talk about performance and how that relates to the future of photography and video production and quite frankly, where we are now with things. So I want to share this with you. This is what we call a GPU. This is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. The GPU lives in your computer and it handles all of the graphics processing. So for instance, you're watching this video right now, you have some kind of GPU that is making that possible. The RTX 2080 Ti is a very powerful GPU. This one is built to live in a desktop. And I want to talk about why this relates to what we're dealing with today in photography. So even for still photography over the last couple years, we have found ourselves in the middle of the megapixel race once again. And so today we have medium format cameras, for example, that will produce images that are 50 megapixels or 100 megapixels. The phase one IQ4 does 150 megapixels. And if you've ever worked with really high resolution images, you know this requires a great deal of processing power. The other side of this equation are applications that we as creatives use on a daily basis. Things like Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, After Effects. And you may have experienced before, depending on the type of computer that you have, that sometimes these applications run fairly sluggishly. If you're doing graphic intensive tasks, such as like maybe copying the edits that you did on one image in Lightroom and pasting it across many in your library, you know that that takes a long time. Exports take a long time. Even for video, I remember a couple years ago when I moved everything over to using a 4K workflow, the first thing that I noticed is there was a huge difference in terms of processing power, how my applications responded, and in particular export times from when I worked in 1080p before. In fact, I know several YouTube creators today that have moved back to 1080p just because the 4K workflow was such a pain to deal with. So full disclosure, this video is sponsored by NVIDIA. And when they reached out to me and said, we want to sponsor video, I had a really specific idea in mind for a project that I wanted to do. Now, if you watch my videos over the last year, you've seen me do a lot of videos just experimenting with the idea of mobility and photography and video and what my setup is and how I can get the most power out of something that is very mobile because I travel about half the year and I spend a lot of time in airplanes and hotels and I need to be able to work when I have downtime, which means processing images, editing and rendering videos, so on and so forth. So what I wanted to do was experiment with this whole idea of using a really powerful GPU like this and running it externally from a laptop. You hear people call this an eGPU setup, and this has been popular in the gaming community for a number of years now, and I haven't seen many people in the creative community work with a setup like this. And so I wanted to try it for myself, and I'll show you how we're going to do this. Basically, what we're going to do is use an enclosure. I'm going to be able to use a really powerful GPU like the RTX 2080 Ti, which is designed clearly to go into to a large desktop, we're going to put this into an enclosure and use the Thunderbolt 3 port off of a laptop to basically use this as the PCIe. Let me show you how this is set up. It's probably going to make a lot more sense. The first thing we're going to need in this setup is an enclosure box. This one is made by Razer. This is the Razer Core X. They can vary in price depending on what kind of features. This one's a little bit more bare bones, but if you want USB-C ports or something like that, you can spend more money and get those. I'm just trying to get the job done here, and this one works great. And the way this works is I just pull out this front panel here, and you can see there is a slot where we are going to mount the GPU card. And so we're basically going to get this in, pop it into place. It is held further secure by this one pin here. All I do is slide the enclosure back in, pop the handle back into place, and we're secure and ready to rock. The next thing you're going to need is a laptop. Now we're going to connect the external GPU using Thunderbolt 3. So you do need a Thunderbolt 3 port. And you want to make sure that it supports four lanes instead of just two, because the more throughput that we have, the better. This is a Dell XPS 9570. It has an i7 chip. You could probably do this with an i5, but again, the more up-to-date that you have your system, the better processing that you're going to have. I also have this maxed out at 32 gigabytes of RAM, and it's super simple. We're just going to connect the Thunderbolt 3 port with the cable that was included with the Razer Core X, and we're about ready to go. And the last thing we're going to do is hook up an external monitor. Now, I'm going to hook this up via HDMI, and we're going to go into the HDMI port that is actually on the RTX 2080 Ti. And this is kind of an optional step, but I do recommend it for getting the most performance because we're going to be outputting to an external monitor. We don't have to route things back to the laptop. So with everything in place, you're going to go ahead and power up. And the first time you do this, it's probably going to have to find some drivers. I would also recommend you head over to NVIDIA's website and make sure everything's up to date. And from there, it's pretty much plug and play. I want to preface this part by noting that this is not a benchmark test. People typically do that to measure performance for gaming applications. 
But what we're looking at here is something completely different. So the use case that I'm looking at in this video is creative application. And this includes photo and video editing as well as motion graphics. And this is where the eGPU really shines. You get the portability of using a laptop and the ability to plug into the GPU and use it as a full studio application. Now, one other note that I want to make here is that this is a basic 1080p monitor that I'm using. But because we've assigned the graphics rendering, to the external card, we could easily hook up a large 4K monitor and have a pretty amazing studio display for working off of a laptop by using this eGPU. Adobe has the tendency to get a little sluggish, you probably noticed, as soon as you start to load the system. And this could be a large library of photographs. Uh, it could be bulk application of edits. For my testing in Lightroom, I imported a set of 50 megapixel images that I took with the Hasselblad X1D. And the performance and functionality when you start zooming in and zooming out of these and the rendering is is about double what I'm getting from just using the laptop by itself. So there's a noticeable performance boost there. Now, I would like to see a higher performance boost from functions like batch export and even the panoramic stitching. There is a slight boost, but not a huge difference between the scenarios of the laptop versus the eGPU. Now, that being said, the times are still acceptable on both. Now, stitching six 50 megapixel files in a panorama took about 40 seconds on both platforms. So it's really not that bad. Now, using Premiere, you're going to see a vast improvement in basic performance. And one of the issues with Adobe Premiere can be what you're doing on the timeline. And with Premiere, it really doesn't take much. I literally moved away from using Premiere last year because the general performance time, it was such a beatdown. And adding things like a LUT to the footage and maybe just a layer of text would just bog down real-time playback to the point where, for me, it really wasn't worth it to use. And it just slowed everything down. Now, adding a GPU with the NVIDIA RT TX 2080 Ti brings back real-time performance with just about anything native that you're going to throw at the edit. This is pretty amazing. Now, there are some third-party plugins that might not make use of the external card, but that's a small trade-off because it still adds to a reasonable performance without the need to constantly be rendering the timeline. You might have to render it on some parts. Also interesting is where you export from Adobe Premiere to Adobe a Media Encoder, and this becomes really interesting. So I took a five-minute clip of some basic edits, and I wanted to watch the render time. And on the laptop by itself, the clip took about five minutes to render to an H.264 4K clip, which is about real time. And this is not bad at all. But with the eGPU, it did it in almost half of the time at about two minutes and 40 seconds. Now multiply this to a much longer video and you're looking at not only better performance, but about half the render time, which is considerable, especially when you get into something that's maybe more like 30 minutes or an hour in length. Now, the most impressive boost by far in any of the Adobe suite was in After Effects. And I had a template for an exploding logo that went well, love it or hate it, it's about eight seconds in length, which is really short, but it's very demanding in the application. And with the laptop alone, this eight second clip took about two minutes and 10 seconds to render. It's a pretty long time. Now with the eGPU, it only took 34 seconds and this was really impressive. So understanding GPU with creative applications comes down to your expectations and the performance of what you're using. And it's really difficult, I think, to measure this as a benchmark. Also interesting is that as I'm releasing this video, NVIDIA has announced their new RTX Studio laptops. These new laptops are designed for creative work and are boasting some serious specs. The new Studio drivers have been tested extensively with applications by Adobe, Epic, Autodesk, Unity, and Blackmagic Design specifically with creative workflows in mind. Time is money and we have a complex set of tools at our disposal, but the right combination of these is not only going to give us a faster results, but much less headache in the end. So a couple important points that I want to make about an eGPU setup like this. Now, first of all, the RTX 2080 Ti is extremely impressive. As you can see here, I'm nearly doubling the performance and speed of this laptop and I'm really impressed and feel really good about the way this is set up. It did what I wanted it to do. That being said, this was designed to go into a desktop and if you use it in a desktop you're going to get even more power and performance out of this and there's a number of reasons why just alone the fact that I can throw more memory at the computer I'm capped out at 32 gigabytes here you're using native PCIe there's a number of reasons why you can expect this to perform even better so that's starting to beg the question well why would I go to the trouble to set this up well the answer is performance flexibility and most importantly mobility and the fact that I can take the laptop unplug it go on the road and I can do my editing I can do color grading I can work with still photos and I can come back to the studio when I need the power for like a batch render or something like that or if I'm putting out a bunch of different video files.
files and I can take advantage of a more robust machine without having to change computers, move files around. So it just gives me a lot of flexibility in what I'm able to do with a fairly portable setup. Love to know what you guys think. Leave me a comment below. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.